All right, guys, so it's time to talk about Joe Biden again. And the reason for that is because Biden had come out and made an oof of himself recently when he said that Trump is a existential threat to the United States because of Trump's fear-based campaign. Now, you see, this is something that the Democrats had did back in 2016 when they were essentially saying that Trump, it, you know, if Trump was elected, then all hell was going to break loose. Women were going to be, you know, taken from their jobs and put back in the kitchen by force. Minorities would be put in concentration camps. Gay people were going to be, have their rights taken away and again sent to the concentration camps. Even though Trump's whole campaign in 2016 largely was just, you know, build the wall, deport illegal immigrants, fair trade, and that was essentially the bread and butter of his entire campaign was build a wall, deport illegal immigrants, and fair trade. Now, the Democrats, of course, were actually doing the real fear campaign, saying all these horrible things that would happen if Trump had been elected, that, you know, we, we would be in World War III and a civil war. Our economy, would become, our, our economy would come booming down. We would be in some Great Depression. And lo and behold, here we are in 2019, three years after Trump had, you know, took in the presidency, or almost three years, and none of that has happened. Our economy continues to boom along. Minorities are safe. Gay people are safe. Even now, safer because of Trump's travel ban. We're not in any major wars, and Trump had said nothing about abortion, gay rights, or anything like that. You see, because President Trump, you know, what, what the Democrats fail to realize is that President Trump is not a social president. Obama was the social issues president. He cared more about social issues and his image to the public being some type of messiah to the far left. Well, Trump does not care about these issues. Tr you know, Trump does not care about the legalization of marijuana. He doesn't care about abortion. He doesn't care about gay rights. He could care less about these things. What Trump is focused on is the economy, trade, illegal immigration, and building the wall. And that's exactly what the people had voted him to do. And the Democrats are having a hard time wrapping their heads around it. Now I know Joe Biden is basically just toting the party line and saying whatever the DNC wants him to say. Oh, you know, you know, go, go out on your campaign, Biden, and say that Trump is a big, bad, evil racist or sexist or something like that. And Joe Biden, you know, steps into command, you know, salutes and toes the party line. Though I'm pretty sure Joe Biden is going to be the front runner in 2020. And it's going to be funny how he's going to dodge the ball of the sexist, inappropriate questions when Trump throws at, when, when Trump throws that at him. You see, because the left and the Democrats, the DNC, believe Trump to be some evil womanizing sexist. Now, it is true that Trump is a ladies man and he's a Manhattan, you know, playboy billionaire you know, that, that that was his kind of life. But the difference between Joe Biden and President Trump is that President Trump is, was with consenting of age females. Joe Biden, on the other hand, has been seen on video and pictures inappropriately groping young girls. I'm talking five, six, seven, eight years old and so forth. And all the Democrats have from Trump is whispers, vague statements, from some other woman. Rumors. That's what they have against Trump is just rumors. No pictures and no video and the grab them by the pussy tape is not enough because obviously they tried that in 2016 and it fell flat on his face. The Democrats are continuing to go down the road that has destroyed them since before 2016. And that road and that path is being Democrats. You see, the paradigm shift in America and mostly worldwide is a paradigm shift away from the liberal left, away from the Democratic Party, away from stupid social issues, and towards more tangible things like conservatism, the economy, fair trade, illegal immigration, decency. More and more of the United States population is waking up to what the Democrats have become. 
even old style Democrats and liberals from the 80s and 70s and probably 90s are abandoning the Democratic Party because the Democrats do not stand for what they believe they stand for. The Democrats used to stand for, ironically, free speech, liberty. They were anti-war, especially under the Bush administration. And now the Democrats have completely flip-flopped and now they're all for censorship, political censorship at that, literally book burning online. They're for wars. They are anti just about anything they used to stand for. And of course, one of their bigger issues, well, I mean, one of their biggest issues is that they really, really don't like white people. Even though they're two literally front runners and the Democratic Party is Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, both rich, old, political white men. And of course, the Democrats are having a hard time thinking of some way to be Trump because they have to understand that the whole old, he's a sexist, he's a bigot, he's a racist, he's blah, 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 doesn't work anymore. It, it didn't work in 2016 when they had a female president, I mean, a female running Democrat for the presidency. It didn't work then. It's not going to work now. And if Joe Biden tries to throw shade at Trump about being a sexist, it's going to blow up in his face 10 times harder. But no. Trump is no threat to the economy. Our economy is doing good. You know, my investments are carrying along. They're doing good, which is actually pretty cool because I received two dividends the other day. But no, um, the, the American economy is doing great. We're running along. There hasn't been any major wars. The, you know, the sky hasn't fallen out. Everything is continuing on. But the Democrats and Ninth Circuit are trying to stop Trump every step of the way for obviously political-based reasons. And that is why they had the whole Mueller report in the first place is try to get something, anything on Trump's past. And, and now they and now they're looking into looking at the IRS and the Department of Treasury to force Trump to give his taxes over to the Democrats or whoever's going to investigate them because they believe they are sold and believe that Trump somehow, some way, some way down the line did something corrupt and backstabbing and horrible and evil and he needs to be prosecuted prosecuted and impeached and removed from office. But that's not going to happen because even if they find something that is, you know, unethical, but not illegal, and especially if Trump wasn't president at the time, back in his private sector days, being a businessman, uh, you know, from New York, they find he did something shady to another businessman, you know, basically being a cutthroat. There's nothing they can do about it. Yeah, they can shame him, but it's like, like what, what, like, what do you do when you're in, when you're in that position? Most of those re real estate most Moguls are basically a bunch of cutthroats anyway. You know, well, what do you think politicians are? They're a bunch of cutthroats also, so it doesn't matter. And here's the also funny thing about this is that Trump for 20 years rubbed shoulders and donated to these people, had these people attend his kids' birthday parties, his weddings, his whatever. These politicians, I'm sure that Trump has dirt on. Because remember, Trump used to be a Democrat before Obama. So I am sure that Trump Trump has all kinds of dirt on all kinds of Democratic politicians. And that's why they're probably, you know, literally walking on eggshells because they want something against him, but it's hard to find it. And, and they're scared if they do find it and they do leak it, then he's going to leak something about them. I mean, I mean, it's a really cutthroat environment. And Trump being into that environment for, you know, almost all of his life, he understands how this game is played. And I'm, you know, in the belief that he's been planning to run for president since probably, you know, 9-11 around that time. You know, may maybe back in the 80s he was planning on running for president, but nobody ever took him seriously. I mean, he was literally on Oprah in the 1980s and she was asking him would he run for president and the whole, you know, crowd cheered on. You know, nobody was calling him a racist, sexist back then. Nobody. So if it doesn't stick then, it's not going to stick now. Saying you want to build a wall, saying you want coherent border wall security is not racist. Saying you want fair trade with China is not racist. 
The Democrats, just like in 2016, are at a huge disadvantage going against Trump because they have nothing to show for it. What have the Democrats been doing since Trump's, you know, 2016 victory? What have they been doing? Running around like chickens without heads, screaming racist, sexist, orange man bad, impeach, 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 and they haven't done anything. They don't have a viable platform to stick to. Their second rate runner for the DNC for the presidency is a literal socialist. They praise buffoons like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez who wants to tax people 70%. I mean, is this is what the Democrats are. They're literally socialists at this point. Militant, violent socialists. And the people, the majority of people, the, the American people are going to walk away from that. Trump is going to win 2020. There's no doubt in my mind that he's going to do it. But no, Trump is no threat to the American economy. He's actually really, really good for it. And the Democrats know this deep down and they can't do squat about it. But either way, you guys go ahead and let me know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And that's about it for this video. Peace out, guys.